Hey, what's up guys and welcome to my quick fire meta guide on the Elemental Shaman for TBC Classic. And I'm going to say this on all the videos in this series, but I decided to make this content as I was personally searching and could not find an overview of what life looks like for each spec in the way I wanted to understand it. My memory is a bit fuzzy and quite simply private servers often discover new things compared to what we knew back then. So whilst there is a lot of great guys that cover each class broadly, I wanted to know some in additional information to inform my choices and these different perspectives of what I was looking for as a consumer of these guides are what I'll cover in these videos. So first we're going to look at the PvE basics and a 10 second or so snapshot of what your typical GCDs will be in a raid encounter. Second, where does this spec excel in PvE? And third, we're going to talk about the limitations of the spec and what potentially will cause your damage to go down or your just overall impact to be less. I'll then go on to discuss professions very briefly and then try and provide a broad overview of what you can potentially expect in the PvP side of things, but I would highlight that for a nuanced and very in-depth PvP sort of direction or opinion, you may want to look for a very specific PvP guide for Elemental. With that said, Let's get the basics out of the way. As an Ellie in PvE, you'll be using a 41020 build that has a lot of inbuilt flexibility. First, you're going to take some no brainer damage increases with Concussion and pick up mana reduction for your key spells to keep you blasting. You're going to skip over row 2 in terms of compulsory talents and you're going to grab 5% crit to Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning and a clear casting proc in row 3 before heading down to more optional talents. And this is where you start picking these optional talents such as Elemental Warding that was in row two that we skipped over. But for dungeons, you will probably get your most mileage from Call of Flame and improved fire totems. But either way, you can take whatever you like, including Reverberation, which reduces your shock cooldowns ever so slightly each point. And this will be useful in kiting situations for solo content. Following this, you grab extra range in row five along with the very important talent Elemental Fury, which is a really important aspect of this to spec overall. And then we can put some two points in Mana Regen, or we can put them back up in the optional talents we've already discussed. At this stage, we simply take all talents in the bottom rows aside from Elemental Shields, which is a PvP talent. Now going over to the Resto Tree, we're here for two key talents, 3% hit from Nature's Guidance, and 5% crit from Tidal Mastery. But how you get there is entirely your choice. So those 12 points, other than those benefits we just discussed, just put them in however you feel, wherever you prefer. Gear-wise, Elemental values spell damage and crit, given the Elemental Fury talent, making their crits deal 100% increased damage, up from 50%. Haste also has some value in terms of letting you do more lightning bolts between your chain lightning cooldowns, but this stat will be largely dynamic in value based on your raid conditions and gear. Spell hit is your least useful stat as an early shaman because you get so much from your talents and also if you are an alliance you get an extra 1% from your racial on top of totem of wrath. So that means that draenei shamans will only need 3% hit which is a very small 38 rating and Horde Shamans will need 4% hit, which is 51 rating. So, once we have this spec, what does our raid gameplay look like? Well, a typical rotation before tier 6 is going to be Chain Lightning, 3 Lightning Bolts into Chain Lightning into 3 Lightning Bolts. And as you get more haste, you may go up to 4 Lightning Bolts between your Chain Lightning as the GCD is reduced and your cast time is also reduced for those lightning bolts so you can fit more in between chain lightnings. But that's typically a more end game state for the spec. If you're really blasting, you will include flame shock in the rotation where you're simply replacing one of the lightning bolts with a flame shock to keep it ticking. However, this is very mana intensive and for many encounters, this can be difficult to utilize well. However, with modern gameplay, this may be the norm. Alternatively, in very mana intensive fights, and especially from tier 6 onwards because of the 5% lightning bolt damage set bonus from the 4 piece in tier 6, 
you may actually be spamming Lightning Bolt. So hopefully we can have more buttons to press if you're playing Elemental, but it may get to a stage where you are just spamming Lightning Bolt for the ease of life regarding your mana on certain encounters. This brings me to Professions quickly. As you may expect if you've already delved into TBC content and guides, Leatherworking is essential in regards to min-maxing PvE content. Four Leatherworkers per group will be the meta, especially when you consider player behaviour that we've seen in Classic WoW in regards to world buffs, let alone the warrior stacking we see at the top end of speedrunning guilds. Other than Leatherworking, the next best option is the 24 free spell power on your rings that is exclusive to enchanters. It's also notable that you can enchant your Bis rings drop the profession, retaining the extra spell power, and being able to take a new profession. But that's more of a very hardcore end game decision that you may not want to do at the end of the day. If you do manage to escape leatherworking or don't want to be enchanting, tailoring and jewel crafting both have strong end game crafts, with tailoring providing an early game boost with the spell strike set bonus and jewel crafting allowing you to have exclusive gems that are slightly stronger. Speaking of strength, where does the Elemental Shaman truly shine? To keep it brief, any fight that has prolonged cleave targets but also does not extend to a stage where Elemental has to consider a less mana intensive rotation, such as dropping Chain Lightning for just Lightning Belt spam. A great example of this is Shade of Akama. The fight begins in phase 1 with a lot of cleave targets, sort of chunky adds that you have to deal with. And it progresses quite quickly into a phase two where you're going to leave those adds up. So you're going to pop heroism on Shade of Akama, and you're typically going to have one to two adds next to him still being cleaved down, which is of course perfect for Chain Lightning. The fight is probably going to be below two minutes for the majority of guilds, and for the speedrunning guilds it may be exceptionally fast. So it really ticks all the boxes for elemental needs for huge numbers. But I want to temper your expectations slightly here. Whilst Ellie does really good damage in these kinds of situations, Blade Flurry and Glaive Rogues, Mages and Seed Spamming Warlocks will pump even harder, typically, on this encounter, and similar ones. That said, Elemental does also hold its own pretty well in single target. It does rely a little bit on crit RNG, especially since the best trinkets seem to be, and I want to highlight that this could be changing as we get to live servers, there are two proc on crit style trinkets, Lightning Capacitor and Sextant of Unstable Currents, as well as similar-ish trinkets. They often work together well, and they may be what you use throughout the expansion. We can see with the example of Trenklet on Netherwing, they were able to do fairly strong on many single target encounters, even in comparison to Hunters and Warlocks. So as long as the gap between these specs isn't exacerbated too much as we move to official TBC servers, Elemental is very respectable all round. So that sounds great. What's the catch? Well, to be honest, not a lot. Mana intensive fights may force Elemental Shamans to cut Chain Lightning from their rotation and thus do lower damage as we've discussed. However, with min-maxed raid comps and modern gamers populating the servers, it may be very rare, you might even be able to play the flame shock rotation on every encounter. It remains to be seen, but overall you're going to be doing pretty good damage. For a more casual raiding style though, this may be more of an occurrence and this will limit your damage. Lightning Bolt spam, whilst it's respectable, is going to be less damage than your other rotations. Finally, in any fight where there's lots of adds that die fast, such as one cycle of Seed of Corruption from all your Warlocks, instead of these chunkier, fewer adds for sustained cleave that you might see on Shade of Akama for example, Elemental will look fairly mediocre comparatively, and that is generally the only real asterisk for this spec. They aren't Hunters, Warlocks, Mages, or even super late game Rogues or Warriors. However, they bring an essential buff in Term of Wrath and provide very real damage for many encounters. Comparing this to Boonkin or Shadow, which are more relevant comparisons, which also bring essential buffs or utility, Elementals are in a great spot. The real sort of issue with Elemental, or the sort of negative to playing Elemental as your preferred spec, is that PvP is going to be a bit worse than your PvE. Actually, quite a lot worse. 
As a general rule of thumb, the larger the bracket you play, the better you'll be as an elemental. But in twos you're going to have to work a lot harder for your wins than pretty much all specs because Ellie struggles when trained by a melee character because they don't have the key tools such as Thunderstorm and Hex until Wrath of the Leech King. This problem is alleviated with the more teammates you have for peeling and additional threats. But to summarise my observations on private servers and their ladders, in threes you have some limited options. It appears that an off-heel heavy roll with another healer and a warrior is plausible, as well as Ellie Mage Priest seems to have had some success on Atlantis. But in twos you're really going to have a hard time, and overall Elemental is in a pretty poor situation for Arena. That said though, that brings this video to a close. Really good class of PvE, you can kind of make it work in PvP but you'll have some issues. You could always play Resto at the end of the day for PvP if you really like PvP. But I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time, hopefully, in your notifications.